And now back to Lindy and the AI talk. Thank you. Okay, I'm back. Okay, let's move on to my favorite part, AI segment. Do you know that there is also an interesting debate about the expansion of primates' uh, brain capacity? The ecological uh, intelligence suggests that ecological uh, facts are the main driving force behind the increase in brain size and intelligence in primates. For example, remembering which trees have ripe fruit and which are poisonous requires strong intellectual ability. The social intelligence, on the other hand, argues that large group living together is the main driving force, and each group needs to defend its territory, identify predators, maintain moderate competition and alliance, all of which require complex intellectual ability. Working together to become smarter, these two perspectives have been on the debate for a long time, so which one wrong at the end? The current general understanding is that ecological factors drive things forward first, followed by the social fact, or social intelligence is a byproduct of ecological intelligence. We can understand it in this way, Ecological intelligence is uh, necessary, uh, while uh, social intelligence is the thing nice to have. So, in the field of soldiering, words are necessary and words are nice to have. Let's take a look at um, some soldiers um, have to say about the use of AI. One soldier worked with us on a function to count glands and he now finds it very useful. He thinks that AI comes faster than they can. Before the function was added, the result could not quantify it. And when patients came back for following up or review their previous case, there was only record uh, gland count low. But after we added our AI uh, glanding counting function, there were accurate numerical results. He found it useful. He was inspired by this function and still thinking about similar application. We have talked to the team at Punch More and the Dr. Hua thinks that AI has some use. It can provide warning and alert for harmful action to avoid injuries. But generally, surgeons can do it by themselves without this function as they have enough um, experience. Another way is that AI is actually uh, not very useful. Everyone is using it to publish articles. This is fine, no more practical use. I went to SRS last month and I saw researchers from Intuitive Surgical present their idea. Now, they will give a new name to a sense. Uh, called surgical data science. What kind of uh, surgical data science is there? Uh, there is a video from uh, surgeries, false data from a robot, preoptive uh, diagnostic, uh, diagnostic data like ECG and MI, uh, data from uh, insufflator, energy platform data, uh, motion curve data. All of this is data that's from uh, Da Vinci Robotic generates or the interface with other medical device. This data things has become a sense at intuitive surgical. This chart shows various things that uh, they, they are doing with surgical data now, including inboarding and outboarding detection, instrument related algorithm and navigation uh, algorithm. The rightmost column shows the functions they have created based on this algorithm, including applications such as parameter optimization for surgical scenario, uh, so surgical activity statistics, and the surgical segmentation. They believe that AI or machine learning is the core of surgical data science. This is not surprising, right? As the data generated by uh, Da Vinci robot uh, need to be systematically managed, 
the goal of the management is to apply it, the most critical uh, technology for extracting and applying data is machine learning. So what kind of game are they playing with this data? I think it's a big game. The current plan is to uh, create a closed loop system for uh, pre-operative, intra-operative, and post-operative data. With intra-operative data uh, as the focus point, for example, they will pull in data from 3D and scope control, instrument switchings, instrument arm position, instrument for spike, all of which are linked to specific surgical procedures. The data can be used for post-operative object evaluation of their surgical quality. For the next generation, the pre-operative phase can simulate training of a surgical, technical, or pre-configured system parameters based on the problems encountered during previous oper uh, operation. From their perspective, as developed, this closed-loop system can also provide more data support for interaction uh, for the next uh, generation product based on their understanding of surgery. As they gain a deeper understanding of surgery data, innovation should accelerate it. For example, they were the first to develop false feedback because they had more clinical application data and knew the direction better and earlier. They also fully consider the value of surgical data science in this direction. Here are the benefits of AI that I believe in, which I just do some summary. I have categorized them, and for the patient, there may be a possibility that surgery time uh, will be shortened due to the surgeon's profession, and they will be discharged sooner. This can lower medical costs and improve their medical experience. For hospital, doctor skill will be improved with the help of AI and corresponding medical benefits will be improved. If high level quality assurance is guaranteed for doctors operating in different branches, then the distribution of high quality medical resource will be balanced. It may seem complicated, but if we use the reason why other industries use AI to explain it, uh, it's just like this, cost reduction, quality improvement, and efficiency increase. As for the value of AI in surgical surgery, I see it like this. First, from the perspective of Intel surgical process, uh, we just uh, think the same thing uh, like how Da Vinci played the big game I, uh, as I mentioned before. From the perspective of uh, different doctors, the value of AI is different. We have uh, medical students, uh, resident attending, and the chief, and expert. Um, for experienced doctor, AI may not play a significant role, but for medical students or the new player, it can help shorten the learning curve and reduce the uh, psychological stress during surgery. In fact, AI is a good help. Before ChatGPT, people did research and find it difficult to uh, read papers. Since ChatGPT came along, it has made these tasks much easier. This is how the value of AI is seen from the perspective of doctors at different stages of their career. Take another step forward uh, from the perspective of the growth of a discipline. Look back from now, the question of whether AI is useful or not is still a matter of uh, debate. In the next 10 years, if AI develops better, its value will be passionate, realized, and it will 
play a more important role in driving the development of a discipline. In the next 20 years, AI will become a matter of routine, just like uh, penicillin. And the value of such AI in the field of surgery have been definitely established. In the United States, the current landscape for surgery AI is roughly as flow. The underlying technology, such as AI hardware, network servers, is supported by big companies like NVIDIA. The data layer depends on the market um, penetration of each company's device, with larger market share resulting in more data. There are also many small companies that are focused at AI application who developed certain applications and sell them to big companies like Entity or Medtronic to integrate. The X system is developing very well. Let's, let's welcome our old friend Dr. Hua to share with us his latest AI progress over the past year. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Hua from Peking Union Medical College Hospital. Last year, we discussed whether endoscopy had reached its full potential and hit the ceiling after implementation of 3D, 4K, and fluorescent. The answer is definitely no. <clears throat> endoscopy will move towards AI endoscopy, just as car goes for auto driving. Currently, the AI endoscopy is akin to auto driving five years ago. Bottling yet progressing rapidly, points to astonish everyone at any moment. Last year, I shared our research on AI-assisted identification of recurrent laryngeal nerve during endoscopic thyroid surgery, but it was still at the algorithm level then identifying the nerves in surgical videos after the surgery on machine. In just one year, thanks to the joint efforts of the Hike Image team, we have successfully progressed to clinical validation research. This is the world's first AI-assisted endoscopic thyroid surgery, as far as we know, and we have initiated a multi-center study in China. Not only are we conducting such research, but AI research on surgical videos is also booming both domestically and internationally. Here is a study from Japan where AI has been able to guide surgeons in rectal cancer surgery to locate anatomical plans, identify nerves and uterus to avoid accidental injuries. Once these computer vision based studies are integrated with robotic surgery, they would offer tremendous application prospects. In this field, we participated in last year's MECA challenge where we compete in identifying, locating, and tracking the movements of surgical instruments in robotic surgery videos. We ultimately emerged as world champion, showing the strength of our Chinese research team. This research need close cooperation between clinician and engineer, where clinicians attribute their requirements in clinical settings, engineer conduct feasibility assessment, and follow by joint research design. The process involves clinician to provide surgical video data and annotations, the engineers to train the models and then jointly uh, conduct tests, debugging, and optimization before moving towards clinical validation. Depending on these results, the uh, cycle repeats itself for further improvements. Among all these tasks, the uh, most time-consuming and labor-intensive one is the collection and annotation of medical video data. This is also the limiting steps for all AI-related research. In early phase, studies were often conducting on a single center basis with smaller sample size, often involving less than 10 doctors for annotation work. At that time, we could still transmit data and collect annotation results through hard drives or cloud storage. The annotation tools were mostly open sourced offline software. Although this was not the optimal solution, it was feasible for data set in tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands scale. It could generate articles, patterns, or models, but it was not enough for commercial use.
the development of commercializable AI application typically require data set in millions, tens of millions, or even billions in data size, which cannot be provided by a single center or annotated by 10 or 100 doctors. For studies of such size, hard drive or a simple cloud storage is clearly not feasible. Therefore, the shift towards multi-center cooperation and platform-based annotation in surgical AI research is an irreservable trend of technological development. Over the past year, we have cooperated with the Hike Image team to develop a platform-based annotation tool specifically tailored for multi-center research scenario. This tool has facilitated the work of anim administrators, annotators, and reviewers by enabling to perform their respective tasks within the platform based on their roles and accounts. This platform-based annotation tool is suitable for all kinds of AI research and uh, surgical video scenarios. It offers flexible task distribution and ensures data security and privacy protection. With such a tool in place, we can significantly accelerate and enhance the efficiency of our multi-center large-scale AI research efforts. Over the years of our cooperation with Hike Image, we have developed a series of AI applications spanning from smart image enhancement, such as AI-based defogging, exposure correction, and multicolor fluorescent, to intelligent recognition and assisted decision making, including recognition of the gauss, surgical instruments, nerves, blood vessels, and anatomical structures. Some of these applications have already made their way into clinical use or validation, such as the four on the left. Many other applications are currently in the pipeline stage. We hope that in the near future, these technologies will be integrated into the operation room assisting more surgeons to provide safer and efficient surgeries for more patients. Thank you all. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hua. This is a picture from our launch event last year. And we mentioned at that time, we might build AI for operating room use a uh, distributed architecture like this. Based on our current situation and the situation of some American companies, hacker imaging is currently focused on AI for the front and the middle brain taskers. While American companies are focused uh, more on AI for middle and the back brain taskers. Here is the summary for you. Let's start by look at different type of operating room taskers important and urgent tasks are usually processed in the front brain. Important but less urgent tasks are processed in the middle brain. Less important and less urgent tasks are processed in, uh, in the real brain. For example, uh, the recurrent region now is an uh, important and urgent task. Damage to it is uh, Irreversible. This is a front brain task. The identification of surgical cause is a uh, important but less urgent task that need to be confirmed before close the incision. This is a middle brain task. The identification of surgical instrument kit, which can be used to statistically mailed the surgeon's profession is a back brain task that is useful for debriefing and uh, transferring experience. But not as important and urgent as the surgical task. In this way, you can see the difference between the three type of tasks. Different tasks have different real-time Requirement. The real time requirement for front brain task is the highest. Important urgent tasks should be matched with the optimal computing power to handle them. However, due to the limitation of equipment space, we cannot have a cell to occupy the entire operating room, right? 
Due to the physical space limitation, the choice of computing platform is different. Front brain tasks are recommended to use embed AI computing platform, like the current AI laptops with about 20 of uh, computing power. The hardware platform space in middle brain will be a bit larger and you won't have to uh, cram it next to the operating table and you can place specialized servers such as NVIDIA's uh, Holoscan GPU in the operating room and the computing power can be tens or even hundreds of uh, teraflops, allowing for more tasks to proceed in real time. For the back brain task, GPU cluster can be used. These are only possible when data volume has accumulated to a certain extent. We don't have AI laid out for the back brain task yet. Let me share you about our um, product architecture for the front and the middle parts of the brain. The task of a front brain, such as gland counting and uh, the range nerve recognition, are processed by the uh, embed, embed AI computing unit in the Mac 5 camera system. This task can be integrated into endoscopic camera system. The task of a middle brain, such as instrument recognition and Gauss recognition, are processed by AI box attached to the device. Our DA770 AI box also uses an uh, embed AI computing platform, but the computing power in this box is stronger than that of Mac 5 AI box. In addition to AI application, the DA770 can also be used for smart labeling. We have also built an ecosystem software, including a player video player, which is specially designed to play video with AI labeling. And I label AI annotation software, which was just mentioned by Dr. Hua. After the system architecture was clearly defined, many Mac 5 AI applications were migrated to DA770. Since the computing power of DA770 is four times that of Mac 5, after migration, the processing frame rate for non-organized object recognition tasks was increased by about 151%, while the processing frame rate for critical organization-related tasks were increased by about 246%. This way, the computing power of Mac 5 can be more focused on image processing and other AI tasks with high real-time requirements. While DA770 can support Mac 5 in distributing the process of tasks that slightly lower real-time requirements. With the increase in computing power, the DA770 can also be used to uh, tackle more complex middle brain tasks in future. It also was mentioning the intelligent and targeting function of DA770. As mentioned earlier, when AI function is turned on, the back end will label the video data in real time based on AI uh, recognition result. If during the use, the user friends some place they want to particular label, they can also manually label them. Whether it's intelligent tagging or manual tagging, they are special mark on the video file. This labeled video file cannot be viewed by a regular player because the format is not compatible. Therefore, a special player is needed. We have developed iPlayer specially to uh, play this uh, video file with label. For example, we identify where Gauss was used during a surgery 
by opening the iPlayer, you can see all the segments where Gauss was used. We can even provide detailed um, statistics on the duration of surgery where Gauss was used. Enable AI annotation software has been explained by uh, Dr. Hua already. I just add a small part. When using our DA717 AI box to automatically label images, the frames that are automatically labeled by AI annotation software can be recognized and extracted from the video directly. This will be very convenient for us to supplement data sets for our AI project in the future. DA717 can be used as such a video recorder. Each patient information can be input at the beginning. The record video file's name is exactly related with patient information. That is what surgeons required, and we did the customization UI interface. This is the overall solution we provide from data connection, storage, playback, and annotation, which can make it easier for us to conduct preliminary search for more AI projects in the future. Developing such AI is not an easy task and requires long-term investment. It also requires our user, customer, and the hacker image to work together to drive this process forward. Our surgeons who are in your daily work can help us to identify the problems you want to solve. Hacker imaging and our Customers can collaborate on research and the prototyping, and then work together to product, uh, productize uh, the technology. Ultimately, if we can find a practical application scenario for turning technology to product, then the technology can truly change things. And I believe. AI can change healthcare industry. This is what I want to share with you today. These past few years have been really tough for our industry. We finally got through the pandemic. It's been a struggle for everyone, and I think everyone who can manage to today is a hero. But the things what we want to do and the challenges we face are so difficult. How can we survive and strive in a healthy, sustaining way? It may require the entire industry to work together, engaged in health complication, and stay longer. Perhaps in the past, some of you have mistakenly thought that hacking imagery was a big complaint. But in fact, we are very small, and our team are very young. We need time to grow, and we appreciate your understanding and the support, which has no hacker images technology to help doctors. We will continue to do our best to provide good product and service. We hope that our customer, yes, that is you, will do your best to provide good product and service to our doctors. We hope that our doctors will do your best to provide good treatment and service to our patient, and that we can all work together to make the industry better. Thank you so much.